check! It's English O'Clock! Ang pag-aaral ng English upang madaling matutunan, bakit hindi natin simplihan? Halika! Manood at makinig sa English Teacher ni Juan! Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na to, huwag kang matakot! I made learning English easy for you! Please like, comment, and subscribe! At pakishare mo na rin sa iba para marami pang mga huwan na gaya mo ang matuto. Hi there! This is our third lesson for this final quarter. Sana nanonood ka pa rin ng mga video lessons na pinrepare ko para sa'yo. In this video, you will learn how to synthesize essential information. Ready ka na ba? Let's start! The target most essential learning competency for this video is Synthesizing essential information found in various sources First things first, let's define synthesis What does synthesis mean? The word synthesis is a noun Its verb form is synthesize At the very basic level Synthesis refers to combining multiple sources and ideas. It is the composition or combination of parts or elements so as to form a whole. It involves looking for similarities and differences between your sources. Sa totoo lang, ginagawa natin to araw-araw. Hindi lang tayo aware na synthesis na pala ang tawag doon. This has something to do with how we process information. We have a lot of sources of information daily. We get information online, at home, at work, or in school, and even in the conversations we have with other people every day. These different sources of information affect our opinion about something. Let's say for example, may napanood kang trailer ng isang bagong movie sa Facebook. And many people liked it and commented that it looks good and they can't wait to watch it. Tapos pagpasok mo sa school, napanood din ng friend mo. At sinabi niya na hindi siya nagandahan sa trailer nito. So, what you do is you put both of those opinions together and formulate your own opinion based on what you already know. Other people's opinion might affect your opinion as well. Maaari na gustuhan mo yung trailer noong una dahil nandoon ang paborito mong artista. Pero pwedeng na-convince ka na hindi ka naman dapat masyadong maging interesado dahil sa opinion na narinig mo sa kaibigan mo. Total, hindi mo rin naman talaga gusto ang ganoong klaseng genre ng pelikula, kaya sa huli, hindi ka excited panoorin ito. Synthesis ang tawag dito. Hindi ito basta pagsasummarize lang ng kung ano ang narinig, nabasa o nakita mo. May kasama itong pag-aanalisa at pagsasama ng sarili mong opinion tungkol sa isang idea. So, through synthesizing, you can form new ideas and opinion. Mac Combs in 2020 views synthesis as going beyond summarizing ideas from various sources. This means that after summarizing the text, one must analyze and combine his or her generalization and conclusion to the analysis made. How is synthesis different from summarizing? When asked to synthesize sources and research, many writers start to summarize individual sources. However, this is not the same as synthesis. In a summary, you share the key points from an individual source and then move on and summarize another source. In synthesis, you need to combine the information from those multiple sources and add your own analysis of the literature. This means that each of your paragraphs will include multiple sources and citations, as well as your own ideas and voice. Again, Synthesis is not a summary, but summary leads to synthesis. At the most basic level, this involves looking for similarities and differences between your sources. 
Your synthesis should show the reader where the sources are similar and where they are different. So, ang paggawa ng synthesis ay parang may ganitong formula. Source 1 plus source 2 plus personal ideas or observation equals synthesized idea. Kagaya halimbawa kapag gumagawa ka ng assignment. Example, you were asked to write an essay about teenage pregnancy. Sakto, may nakita kang article online about it and you said, Ayun, may assignment na ako. That's wrong. Hindi dapat na basta magka-copy-paste ka na lang mula sa isang site without understanding what the article means. Malay mo, hindi ka naman pala agree sa lahat ng nakalagay doon. And primarily, hindi naman talaga sa'yo galing ang ideas na nakasulat doon. Plagiarism yon kung aakuin mong iyo ang gawa ng iba. You should not just copy the ideas from your source. You should look for other sources or articles that talk about the same topic. Try to compare and contrast the information from those different sources, then process the information by analyzing them to create meaningful interpretation. Pwede ka pang mag-input ng sarili mong idea base sa kung ano ang nalalaman mo mula sa mga personal experience mo o sa experiences ng mga kakilala mo tungkol sa nasabing topic. Halimbawa nito ay yung mga beliefs mo before which you think are correct but proven wrong because you were able to provide yourself with true and factual information from the reliable sources you gathered. From this, you get a deeper understanding of the given topic. Kaya naman, these are the three types of syntheses that a student just like you can make. It can form, number one, a new understanding, something that a reader has not considered before until reading the text. Number two, a deeper understanding, becoming more aware or appreciative of an idea after reading a text. And number three, a changed understanding, thinking differently because of the text. Now, Here's a brief and simple example of synthesizing information given in several sentences. Source number one. Marisa saw a strange man enter the gym this morning. He was dressed in a suit. Source number two. Caroline was in the gym when a man came in and talked to Coach Carter for several minutes. They walked around the gym looking at some places where paint was chipped and where the bleachers were cracked. Source number three. Joseph overheard one of the secretaries in the front office saying that the superintendent would be visiting today to look at the building and any budget needs for the next year. Synthesis. The superintendent visited the school today and he went to the gym. He talked with Coach Carter who showed him some areas in the gym that may need renovation or repairing as part of the budget process. From this example, observe that words were not copied directly word per word to form a synthesis. Sentences are paraphrased to be able to come up with your own composed paragraph without changing the meaning of the information you have taken from your sources. Strategies in Synthesizing Synthesizing can be difficult, especially if it is your first time to formally do it. But here are the suggested strategies that you can follow. First, the REST method. R. Read two different sources about a topic and record ideas. E. Edit notes and combine concepts that are similar. S. Synthesize by combining notes with what you already know about the topic. T. Think about your new ideas and connect them to what you already know. And this is the example. Also, take a look at the underlined phrases in the synthesis part pointing out similarities and differences of information between the cited sources.
Next strategy is the add method. Add is similar to rest, but it can be used with just one text. The advantage of add is that it helps you learn to integrate your learning with what you already know and discuss it with other students. Kung nagsisimula ka palang matutunan na mag-synthesize, maaaring mahirapan ka mag-synthesize ng information from multiple texts. Kaya sundan mo ang method na ito. A. What the students already know about the topic. D. What the student learned during the reading on the same topic. D. What the student learned during the discussion of the topic. According to the source, this technique is like a stoplight. A is the red light where students stop and think about what they already know before moving on. During the read, students proceed with caution and process new facts about the topic. The green light is the discussion when students talk with peers and discuss what they have learned about the subject. Here is an example. The Lion and the Mouse by Aesop A lion lay asleep in the forest, his great head resting on his paws. A timid little mouse came upon him unexpectedly, and in her fright and haste to get away, ran across the lion's nose. Roused from his nap, the lion laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature to kill her. Spare me! Beg the poor mouse. Please let me go, and some day I will surely repay you. The lion was much amused to think that a mouse could ever help him. But he was generous and finally let the mouse go. Some days later, while stalking his prey in the forest, the lion was caught in the toils of a hunter's net. Unable to free himself, he filled the forest with his angry roaring. The mouse knew the voice and quickly found the lion struggling in the net. Running to one of the great ropes that bound him, she gnawed it until it parted, and soon the lion was free. You laughed when I said I would repay you, said the mouse. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. Moral Kindness is never wasted. At first, I was thinking that this was a story about a lion who was going to eat a mouse. Now I am thinking that this story is about a mouse who got lucky since the lion let him go. After reading, I think that this story is really about how one can make a difference and be kind to anyone no matter who you are in terms of physical appearance size or built of body, or status in life. The third strategy in synthesizing is a Venn diagram. You can use this method to record facts about two topics, which go in the large outer circles and then record overlapping facts and ideas where the circles overlap. You can add information at each step. Prior knowledge, reading, and discussion. From this diagram, you can formulate your own ideas and thoughts about the topic. However, keep in mind that Venn diagrams only work well with simple topics and comparisons. So did you learn something today? Sure ako na hindi ka na nosebleed? If you want more of this video tutorial and learn English in a light speed, Huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at i-turn on ang notification button para updated ka sa mga bagong lessons. Ako ang teacher mo, ang English teacher ni Juan. Class dismissed! See ya!